We are living in very scary times. Every little thing black people do is being policed by white people. Walking, breathing, talking, swimming, shopping, driving, everything. White people are watching us in a way that is going to get us killed. The white gaze is like the empty, glassy stare of a reptile, poised to strike. It is the act of looking and observing from the perspective of a predator. Somebody? Somebody watching? In the film, when you first meet Chike and his mother, you meet them through the white gate. They're moving into this plush house. Nobody quite understands what they're doing. When I first read the script, I thought it was taken from a true incident that happened because it was so realistic and so apropos for the times we're living in. There were so many of these stories about the way young black boys are perceived and what an absolute threat it is to their lives. In Neighborhood Alert, what excites me is there's a full understanding of the representation of how we are portrayed. So Ngozi understands that and she's in a position to subvert that in a way that for me contributes to not only cinematic healing but also our society's healing. As a young black man, I feel unsafe when I'm in different neighborhoods. Sometimes like uh, maybe uh, I'm not supposed to be here. Like what am I doing wrong? Why, why do people view me as a threat? The origins of this project began in 2018. Agazi told me a story that had happened to a friend of a friend of hers. And I suggested that day that she should write and direct the story and I would produce it. Look at the garage here. It says autistic man lives here. Cops, no excuses. But it's this sign right here that says probably the least amount that tells the whole story of this mother. Nobody should be put in the position of having to do what she had to do for a child in order for him not to die. In our story, we have a mother who has made a similar choice. She takes a job as a nurse for an elderly woman and the job involves living in living in the guest house on the property with her son. She proceeds to realize that the reality of their everyday life in this relatively low-key, crime-free environment is actually a dangerous one for her and her son. This film forces you to ask yourself, who am I in the moment that creates the context of danger that our lead characters find themselves in? It's just a really rich, rich visual tapestry. And then within that, to place these two people who should be at home, but are made to feel like they're not at home, um, I think is really exciting. This is a project about different perspective and how we stare at people we don't really quite know. And uh, cinematically, what's interesting about it is, especially nowadays that we have got rings and security cameras everywhere, we have got this strange barrier between us and, and, and the human on the other side. I was attracted to this story because of the angle it took. It's very rare that you see the perspective of the perpetrators. And it's very moving. And when I first heard the story, I was devastated. But there's also some, some stuff in there that made me laugh. She's got all of life in there. Many may not know, but Ngozi's one of the film icons uh, worldwide. She is the first black woman to premiere a film in theaters in the UK. Ngozi is a legend. I'm one of her biggest fans. This is a historic moment that this lady is stepping back behind the camera to bring us the knowledge. Ngozi was one of the very first directors I ever worked with all the way back at film school. One thing which attracted me to Ngozi and Ngozi's work was just her expressiveness and, uh, and also I was attracted to her political point of view or her engagement of social justice. I cannot overstate 
how excited I am that Ngozi's coming back behind the camera. A voice that we have needed is coming right now. If you want to support, if you want to be part of it, there's so many ways. People can support this film by you know, spreading the word, sharing this with your friends, your family, spreading this on all social media platforms. I think a brilliant way to support the project is if you have $5 or $10 or, or 100 or a couple of thousand, you can pledge your support, which means that you're not just giving money away, which is also a reasonable thing to do, but you're becoming involved in the project. We need you to support this film. And to support this film, all you need to do to find out all the wonderful ways in which you can contribute, click the link. Click on the link. Just click the link below. Click the link below.